Greece. The land of crystal clear blue bays, sleepy villages and legendary hospitality. Come with us on an off-road road trip along the mainland coast and discover Greek cuisine and some real insider tips. On our first day, our route to Greece takes us from Germany, through the Czech Republic, Slovakia and on to Hungary. Around 4 a.m. at night, we reach the picturesque fishing village of Bokot in Hungary. After only four hours of sleep, we are woken up in the morning by the loud birds and frogs of the lake. I wanna wander out of the valley with the wind. One of the stilt houses has been converted into a tourist attraction by a couple of locals for over 10 years now. They both invite us to their roof terrace in the morning and serve us a heavenly fresh coffee. Rested and strengthened, we leave Hungary, cross Serbia and then northern Macedonia. On the way there, we have already picked up some insects on our roof tent. We reach the hot springs of Posar in northern Greece at around 1 at night. Dead tired, we fall into our bed. Our first real day of holiday begins with a bath in the hot springs of Posar. The splashing of the water on our shoulder blades is a welcome massage after the long driving times of the last few days. We have our first frappé for breakfast and then head south to the town of Katerini. Here, there is the small taverna George's, where we ordered Zippero Messe. The visitor then receives two glasses of Zippero on ice, a distilled grape spirit similar to Uso, and various small dishes to share. Towards afternoon, we rest a little. At the salt pans of Pydna, we stand for the first time with a defender directly on the beach. But the salt pans themselves are also worth a visit. If we look closely, we discover small salt wonders at every corner and can even take a bath in the salty water. This helps against skin impurities and is even said to be helpful for joint pain. It feels as if you are floating in the brine due to the high salt concentration. Bathing in the salt pools leaves thick salt crystals on the skin. We let ourselves dry in the sun and in the sea breeze, later collect some waste on the beach and then in the evening make our way to my absolute favorite restaurant, back to Caterini. At Tokotoiki to Nikola, we enjoy the so-called snow white salad with its delicious Greek tomatoes and pan-fried pork with a squeeze of lemon. Then, later we head back towards the sea on the beach. With a view of Mount Olympus and the brightly lit towns beyond, we fall asleep. During coffee the next morning, we have to watch out a bit for the resident snakes, but all goes well and we are captivated by the snow-capped peaks of Mount Olympus in the distance. On previous holidays, I always wanted to drive as far up Mount Olympus as possible. However, with locally rented Fiat Puntos, this is not a good idea. With our defender Ralphie, we now have the right car for it, and so we start our ascent in Zion. On our way up, we also discover the Orlias waterfall, with its clear greenish pool 
and its small animal inhabitants. The cold mountain water is a welcome refreshment for us and our four-legged friends Trüffel and Pelle. The climb is enormous fun. Occasionally, we are a little bit worried because branches are hanging quite low and could perhaps slash the awning or because very sharp stones could damage our tires. As we are still on the road with normal road tires and do not yet have any all-terrain tires in use. In the end, everything goes well and we reach our destination, Cormilia Refuge. We meet a bachelor party from Israel there. We get in talks, hand out a cold beer and enjoy the view from up here together. Once in the area, we move on to the old mountain village of Pantelaimonas. We explore the small alleys, the church square, and stop for a rest in one of the taverns. In the evening, we return to the coast of Pantelaimonas, have dinner and then stop at the Bar Galleria. This bar was built in a former railway tunnel of the Orient Express. Both our dogs and we make new friends and we are allowed to spend the night in the car park. Thanks for the hospitality, John. Now it's time to head further south. Today we want to reach the north of the Pelion Peninsula. Michel has taken great effort to find a route that always runs along the coast and does not take us inland for too long. What starts well at first and reminds us of the Croatian Jadranska Magistrala, suddenly becomes a challenge. A paved road suddenly turns into a construction site, then, at some point, into a narrow dirt track through the mountains. An unplanned off-road experience, which we mastered after all, and which rewarded us with many beautiful views. However, the 20 km long off-road trail leaves some marks on the car.
On the further way through the mountains, we keep discovering some special things such as this small family of pigs or herds of goats. From Volos, we cross the mountain towards Pelion's east coast. At the top, there are still masses of winter snow. In Serpentines, we wind our way down to the sea and enjoy our hill descent assist system. We explore Pelion's first beaches and then end the day in Corefto. We have dinner in a wonderfully colorful taverna and then spend the night at the harbor construction site of a small town. A new key wall is being built here, but since it is Sunday, there is no activity. Our pitch today feels more like a beach with a sea view. Early the next morning we set off for Damuhari. The small fishing village is a real insider tip. The small picturesque alleys invite you to discover them. Just in time for breakfast, we stop at the Victoria Cafe and enjoy the view with fresh orange juice, sandwiches and omelettes. The garden of the Hotel da Mujari alone is a work of art and its cuisine, as we should later discover, one of the culinary highlights of our trip. The Mukhari has captivated us so much that we decide to exchange our roof tent for an apartment for a few days and stay a little longer. At Guesthouse Germanico, we stay in exactly the apartment where the actress Romy Schneider spent her holiday in Greece in the 70s. Her stay caused quite a lot of chaos in this little village at the time. First, because of the following reporters, later, because of all those who wanted to spend their holiday in the same place as the famous Romy Schneider. And suddenly, a lot of beautiful women in tight swimwear came to Damuhari, and a lot of local men from the surrounding villages suddenly became interested in the little village as well. Speaking of movies, Damuhari was, by the way, the location for the musical film Mamma Mia. Dinner at the Damuhari Hotel was unforgettable for many reasons. First of all, because this place is simply magical. Hundreds of lovingly arranged decorations make the terrace of a restaurant appear dreamy, 
There was no classic menu that evening and we were allowed to choose our food directly from the pots on the oven. The view, the unparalleled hospitality and the tame fox will also make this meal unforgettable. During the next few days we kept it quiet. We went to bed late and got up late. Michelle got a private yoga lesson in the olive groves from the owner of the Germanico Inn, Katerina, and we ate and drank our way through the little village. Damuhari is a great place to explore the surroundings and the rest of the Pelion Peninsula. For example, Fakistra Beach. A beach with crystal clear water, wonderful sand and even a waterfall. It doesn't get any better than this. Also nearby is the big tree in Sakarara, a thousand year old plane tree that spans an entire church square with its huge branches. The trunk alone has a circumference of 14 meters. So there must be something special about this place. If not here, where else should you light a memorial candle? At Milopotamos Beach we explore the local sea caves, which are only accessible from the waterside. The incoming light and water baths the caves in a magical blue glow. Inside, the splashing water, however, can make strange and sometimes scary noises from time to time. Our journey took us further south to explore the beaches here as well. Due to the low season, however, many restaurants were still closed. Instead, we came across exciting off-road tracks again. Near Milani Beach, we stopped for a frappe in the Taverna Soli Ma Milani, which was actually still closed as well at that time. But they wouldn't let us leave without a coffee, especially after the exhausting journey here. Once again, an example of Greek hospitality.
We ended the day in Cutty George's. We set up our camp directly in the harbour, from where we could look out over the small coastal village. In Taverna Areti, we were spoiled with the finest seafood and were given a Zippero to go as a farewell gift, which we drank while editing the photos back at the car. At the southernmost end of Pelion, Trikiri awaits us. Another sleepy fishing village with countless small alleys and cozy corners. In the shipyard, a sight you don't see very often. 50-foot yachts, dusted and propped up on wooden planks. Since the beginning of the financial crisis in 2008, these two ships have probably been lying here on land, waiting for their return to the sea. For lunch, we stop at Manola's Taverna and enjoy the best freshest lobster ever. In the afternoon, we set up our camp swim right in front of the car and charge our battery storage and electronic devices with a solar panel. Towards evening, back at Manola's Taverna, the weather changes. Thunderstorms and gale force winds are moving in. Thank God Manola's brings us back to the Defender on the other side of the town with his car. Otherwise, we would have been completely soaked. Because of the storm, we have to sleep in the car until 3 a.m. But then, we can put up the tent and really relax for a few more hours. The next morning, the storm and rain are history. After a real Greek mocker and a visit to a bakery, we continue to the northern end of Pelion's west coast. We stop where we like in between, take a nap, stop in a taverna. Finally, we drive to the Seeker campsite. This way, we can do the laundry and also take a long, warm shower and just relax. Late in the evening, we are guests in the bar of the neighboring campsite Camping Hellas. To our surprise, they serve one of the best whiskey sours of my life. It is a great evening, except for the barcat Oliver, who doesn't have such a relaxed evening because of our two bulldogs. Now that we have driven all the way around Pelion, the time has come to leave the east coast of Greece. Through the heartland and the mountains, we start our way to the west coast. We explore old stone arch bridges and waterfalls and admire the untouched nature.
At Anna Brisula, we make a short stop for lunch. Trout lovers can catch their own trout here and have it prepared. We cross the Mesohora Dam inland, which has never been put into operation since its completion in 2010, due to a lack of permits. In the river valley that follows, we opt for a few off-road tracks that bring us very close to the water. Further in the evening, we pitch our tent a few kilometers further along this river. We stand directly by the bubbling water, surrounded by high rock faces to the right and left. The sun is setting, the shadows of the mountains wander through the valley. My father used to read me from Pete Fromm's adventure novel, A Winter at Indian Creek. It feels a little bit like that, but with warm weather. After leaving the mountains behind, we reach the lagoon of Coronesia. The greenish-blue water catches our eyes again and again. Later that day, we explore the remains of a Roman aqueduct. Michelle once again proves to be a turtle rescuer. During our whole trip, we don't pass one turtle without putting it across the road safely. A surreal landscape awaits us at the red fields of Coquinopilos Preveza. Along an off-road track, we drive over the red sand and clay soil and feel like on another planet and at times like in a desert. In the evening, we park our defender Ralphie at Lake Zero. Here we meet Lucas who runs a canoe rental business here. He named his business Into the Wild, just like the movie. After years of unhappiness in his studies and job, he now concentrates on his passion here. Today, we are allowed to spend the night directly at the lake, and in return, we take care of Lucas' boats at night. Lucas gives us a canoe, life jacket and paddle already in the evening, so that we can start paddling on the lake first thing in the morning. He didn't promise too much when he said that this is the best time for a kayak tour. It is heavenly quiet as the first golden rays of sunshine break through the mist. Now we drive up the west coast towards Igumenica. The remaining towns on the west coast, such as Parga for example, were unfortunately already very crowded. Therefore, we concentrate on a few selected beaches until we are to find a very exceptional campsite north of Igumenica later.
Based on the satellite image on Google Maps, we had hoped to be able to drive all the way onto the beach at this location. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. With a little off-road adventure, however, we came quite a bit closer to Corfu Beach. One last time we bathed on the Greek coast, sat behind our car, enjoyed the view, back up and edited our photos, charged our equipment and cooked our dinner on the gas cooker. We always had Albania on our bucket list for a long time. So once we were in the region, why not take advantage of a return trip and get a first impression? In Butrint, we took an adventurous raft to Xamir. In Butrint National Park, great nature and friendly people awaited us everywhere we looked. After a short coffee break and watching the hustle and bustle around us, we continued our journey to the Albanian address for fresh mussels, the Mussel House. We enjoyed fresh oysters, mussels and delicious mussel saganaki, while watching crabs and fish swimming around right from the table. We were thrilled by the rich colors of Albania's coast. We then continued our journey north through the mountains and beautiful mountain villages and passes. Further north, we found that although the Albanian coast has its charms, many coastal towns have been or are being mercilessly built up. We heard several times from waiters and petrol station attendants that the real Albania is to be found in the hinterland and in the mountains near Tef or Koman. Perhaps a future destination for us. But to be honest, we don't like these clusters of hotels and tourist strongholds at all. In the evening, we end our holiday at the Pa Ema campsite in Albania. Our journey now ends with white wine and the sun setting over the sea. We have learned that the Greek East Coast is totally underestimated. The Pelion Peninsula, with its great coastal villages and beaches alone, ensures that. As for the hospitality of the Greeks, it will probably remain unparalleled for a long time. We are happy about all the people we were able to meet and whose stories we learned. We look forward to seeing you again, Greece. <laughs>